everybody. So we're so excited to be here today to talk about the latest episode of Chesapeake Shores. This is Chesapeake Chats uh, at season three, episode four. And we are going to dive right into it. This is I'm Rachel and uh, Lisa and Casey are here to talk about it. So thanks so much for joining me, you guys. Yeah, thank you. Hi. Thanks. Hey. <laughs> Yeah, and so let's dive right in. This was a pretty well. What were your overall feelings for this episode? Starting with Lisa, my overall feelings were that I thought I loved Jess, but after this episode, I just ran around the house screaming, "I love Jess! I love Jess!" <laughs> and that was pretty much. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, what about you, Casey? I wow, this episode had me engaged the entire time. Yeah. Um. I was on the edge of my seat. There were a lot of moments where I was like, wait a second, I need more. I need more of them. And I need more of them. And I, I, I need, I need to know what happens. Yeah. I, I, I just need so much more. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's so interesting because honestly, like Jess is kind of in, in a lot of ways, she's kind of an irritating character. Like her behavior is super immature, but they, they, I think they counterbalance it with enough sort of, um, I don't know, just sort of exuberant naivety that like you can't help but root for her and be glad uh, that that. <laughs> and so yeah, I agree with you. She was great, and the whole plot line uh, with her was really great. And I really actually enjoyed everything pretty much in this episode. I thought it was definitely the best of the season so far, mm-hmm. and. Uh, it was, it's still, I, I still think some of their choices are really strange from a writing perspective, but it was still very entertaining. So I'm going to have, we're going to have a lot of fun you know, talking about it. So, yeah. so, okay. It starts out the episode with <laughs> Jess and Bree and Jess is very upset about this whole situation with David uh, being uh, offered the CEO position and she wants to call Abby and uh Bree's like hold up she's on vacation like you don't bother her (laughs) I mean like I said on Twitter I said I'm honestly not sure why him taking a job is a deal breaker but in Hallmark becoming a CEO is basically like you're selling the soul to your soul to the (laughs) devil (laughs) I mean should she be so concerned that this job offer has been made I would be um yeah because i mean she's only known him as one thing as one way it's just in her world in chesapeake shores which she says later she's never left and we all knew that but and i think just the idea that this really could not work out and i could be here or i could be at home and he could realize okay this is what my true path is and i'm not part of that and i don't know for me that's that this relationship is my favorite in terms of the romantic relationships that happened so far on this show, I just want more of Jess and David and their story. And so this to me is an interesting conflict because even though yes, CEO is the devil, (laughs) being CEO to business is the hallmark devil. um, It is a legit issue like stay there or go back with her, which one makes him happier, which one makes her happier. How do they come to the middle and make each other happy and make themselves happy? Yeah. It's, I think it's an interesting conflict. Yeah. What do you think, Casey? Um, so I think that, hmm, I think it wasn't necessarily that he's, be, that he's become the CEO. I think it's how it came, how it came about. Uh-huh. Um, the fact that mom and dad are super snotty and all that jazz and they just kind of uh, bomb dropped it on them um had she had a good relationship with them and had they actually really liked her for who she was and um I, I feel like it wouldn't have been as like oh my goodness he's selling his soul he's becoming yeah. the CEO because I mean he works from home so he could totally work from home in Chesapeake Shores right. he just wouldn't be her cook but they'd have money to hire the best cooks for their or Oh, what is it? Oh, bears. <laughs> yeah. And they'd be rich. And then they'd have like this awesome like little B and B in uh Chesapeake Shores yeah. and she wouldn't have to worry about anything. But I think it's really how 
like the parents were just like, oh, you're CEO, and here we're going to dangle a carrot in front of your face, just Jessica. <laughs> yeah, she could be like the next Barefoot Contessa. Have you ever seen yeah. that show on the Food Network? But she's like the food lady, and her husband is like the business guy, and she's always like, Joffrey, Joffrey, go get me. Go get me the ice cream, Joffrey. <laughs> and <laughs> she could be like that. Yeah. <laughs> Great be great uh but yeah i mean i see your point and i i think this whole thing was just super fun like i really think it's an interesting thing because i think in other actors in other things i think she could be really grating and if somebody found her grating i would totally understand uh but i don't know they just it works it works i think maybe because of her age her naivety naivety um she's just so sweet that it works i feel like and and like in fa- in fairness to david like he has never said that he was going to accept the job or that he uh was even interested in the job i mean he had to have left for some reason and I, I would think that she'd want to know like why did he <laughs> become a chef you know like what's going on um and so it's 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 just sort of funny and but yeah she's wants to call abby abby is evidently this pillar of strength within the family uh but brie <laughs> says no <laughs> and, uh, and then we flip over to abby and trace on this tour and uh i have a question about trace because have they made him too much of a paragon of virtue this season like he is perfect like he says like everything right with the kids he never seems to get irritated or annoyed he does everything right with citing the as far as anything involving the band like he's never self-interested about his career he always picks the band over himself he's worried about donovan and if donovan is taking some of donovan's time all this stuff like he is pretty perfect and the truth is like the more i thought about it i kind of feel like every single man in this show except for connor has been a paragon of virtue this season like yeah what yeah. flaws have we seen right i'm with you. let's try yeah it was a note that i had i was like trace so far is the only artist that actively downgrades their situation like <laughs> most people would be like sweet i get extra time i mean that sucks i feel bad because that other person in the show is not but yeah we're getting more time we're getting more exposure yeah we're getting articles yeah we're getting tours yeah but he's like man we're going on tour <laughs> oh, god i'm doing this article and it's gonna talk about me <sighs> And go, oh, we're gonna. I get more set time. Oh. I'm like, how are you? Like, you're the only artist I've seen that's like downgrading their situation at every turn. And I'm like, I need you to be a little bit more, not a jerk, but a little bit more like, hey, cool. Yeah. 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 Like, at the very Thanks. least, he should at least like be a little more conflicted about it and then make the right choice or make the wrong choice for the drama. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you agree casey yeah they pretty much swapped the halo on them and they're like oh ah, <laughs> yeah it's like a cowboy shaped halo and <laughs> i mean he he is super dreamy uh this episode uh but but yeah it, i don't know i just i just noticed that this episode i'm like david has been perfect uh pretty much mick has been perfect like aside from maybe miss like the initial episode i guess like the conflict with connor but that was resolved immediately and <laughs> everything else like all the other kevin has been perfect mm-hmm. only connor is the only one <laughs> which makes connor seem even more of, of like a what is he doing i think but anyway so yeah so trace he's on the tour uh and um uh, they did get a pretty good kiss, I thought, that <laughs> against the wall. Oh, against that, the that, wall. Yeah, I was, was like, uh, racy. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> that was nice. I like that. I thought uh, of you and that um, podcast you and Amy did. I would, <laughs> the kissing podcast. Yeah. I was like, oh, that's going to make the list on the next round. <laughs> no. They, they are, like, scoring. We got the uh, 16 Candles kiss. We got, this is, this is really good. 
uh, we got two. I, or maybe it was the same song played twice. I'm not sure. But anyway, we got some Trace songs. And uh, did you have any thoughts about Trace's songs? <laughs> I'd go to his concert. Yeah. Hey, I would. <laughs> Lisa, no. <laughs> <laughs> I have no comment here. I love Trace and Trabby. That's all I have to say. I will refuse. You will never see me live tweeting using Trabby. I reject it. <laughs> By the way, totally off topic, but <laughs> before the mystery, <laughs> they had Lori Laughlin on and she's like, don't forget to use hashtag hallmark movies and mysteries and it wasn't then they you know bring it up on screen and it wasn't a hashtag it was like oh, an yeah. app <laughs> i was like what <laughs> i think hallmark knows what a hashtag is that was hilarious i thought okay so i i do kind of wonder like why is david not telling his parents to just hire his sister like why isn't he like saying <laughs> Uh, is he just not sure what he wants to do at this point? Or, like, that just seems like the obvious solution and they're they're not embracing it and he doesn't seem to be uh, talking about it. You so, agree? I, yeah, I, I think he is doing it out of obligation. Mm -hmm. um, I think that when you've been in, raised in an environment where your parents pretty much plan out your entire life and you are naturally a good obedient kid you're just gonna say yes even as an adult it's hard to just be like uh no this is not what I want because um he seems like a people pleaser and that's not mm -hmm. necessarily a bad thing yeah um I think when it comes to his parents he's just very respectful of them I mean that's what it appears to be he's very respectful of them um he wants to honor his parents and then he ha he's having a hard time saying no because it's an obligation and it might have been something that was inbred in him since he was a kid like you're gonna take over or you and your sister are gonna be the next you know ceo and, you know president of this company and blah, blah 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 so i think it might just be hard for him to just you know tell his parents off in that situation you know mm -hmm. um that's kind of my theory well yeah i mean i can see that i just I just surprised he's not a little bit more of an advocate for his sister. Maybe his sister's a jerk and she doesn't like him. I don't know. But I uh, sister. Yeah. I'm kinda like I'm suspicious. <laughs> I'm very suspicious of her motives of her friendship with Bree, them sitting up there in that loft with some yeah. champagne and some cookies and she's like digging in nope, I'm suspect of it all. <laughs> oh dear. Yep. Yeah. Me too. <laughs> Thank you. I'm like Me too. there's an agenda there. Yeah. But but don't you think her agenda is just to be president of the company, which she is qualified yes. to be? Right. But I wonder if honestly I had the feeling that maybe her parents weren't as digging around as Alexandra made it seem like. And maybe Alexandra helped with that a little bit more because uh, she was sure was behind Jess giving a whole lot of head signals to everybody to Jess and then her parents and then little nods. And I was like, listen. I, mm -mm, I pick up some bad vibes from you. She has great bangs, but I still pick up bad vibes. Well, and and like honestly, in this day and age, like who keeps like a dossier like that? Like a like no. I, it should have been like a flash drive or something like that. that would have been way more believable than some like finder. But I guess you can't like have this dramatic scene with yeah, a I mean, plug in this flash drive. This is it. Not me. Uh, well, I mean, they are not millennials, the parents, so, yeah, I mean, fair. I've worked with several people that they, they still print and write everything. Like, yeah, that's oh, true. Yeah. That's a good point. So, I mean, well, that's probably why. <laughs> so, Casey, we didn't get your opinion last week on the vow renewals. Are you yay or nay on vow renewals? I mean. I don't know that I do it personally. I mean, if I was going to do it, I'd probably like go with my husband to Hawaii by yeah. ourselves and like on top of a mountain or something. <laughs> but, yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, the, I didn't mind how 
what's his Thomas and Robin did it this season. Yeah. It was just the family. I mean, if yeah. they had this whole blown out like we're inviting everyone and their cousin it'd be a little odd but well and it seemed like at first that's what was happening because megan was all talking we're gonna make it really big we're gonna make it and then like it was kind of weird like first of all i thought this was going to be like a conflict through the whole season and they just keep like bringing up conflict and then like resolving it really fast (laughs) like okay whatever um and I'm also sort of surprised that they would have this vow renewal when, especially since uh, Robin and Thomas don't have any children, when Bree and, uh, and Jess are out of town, Abby's out of town, like everybody's out of town. I don't know. I was just like, this is weird. Like, I don't know, so like but, uh, but yeah, it just all happened way faster than I thought it was going to. Which is proof that weddings can be put together in less than a week. And there shouldn't be dramatic two-hour movie breakups over. Yeah. I'm just kidding. (laughs) (laughs) Well, and also, I I think that it's fine to have a vow renewal. But I repeat what I said last week. I'm not buying no present for a vow renewal. So we can all agree there. Yeah, it was that's pretty not... though. I thought it was really pretty though. It yeah. Was. Oh yeah. It was, was really, really pretty. And yeah, because at the beginning of the episode, you have them all sitting around the fire, and that was such a fun scene. And I loved that scene. Yeah. Sorry, just real fast. No, just please. All the older people, you know, yeah. as much as I want to relate to the younger people, I'm not young, and I do relate more to the older older yeah. people, and I'm like, oh, look, they're all drinking and sitting around and talking, and I love that, and I just, I really, really yeah. like that scene. Yeah. It was really fun, and I really liked, uh, <laughs> Kevin came up, and he's like, they're like, the kid's <laughs> fire is down. That That's great. Which was awesome. <laughs> yeah, that was so good. And I just really liked how, like, honest they were, and it was just, like, so effective you know that my, mick was just like i don't really get it but whatever you do you and, and megan's like it's romantic and you know nell's piping in it was just like a fun little moment yeah so then we get back to trace and uh that he says that uh when he's talking to the the rest of the band he says i that uh he's used to doing things by myself and it's like what the whole re the whole conflict of last season was that he didn't want to be a solo act and do things by himself and that he wanted to be part of the band and i mean i can't think of hardly anything that he did even building the bar or whatever that that's with mick what does he ever like how could he possibly say that he's used to doing things by himself yeah i just i honestly i find the tour exhausting i'm sorry to everybody out there that really loves that i i just i find the whole tour exhausting it it just seems like the same conversation over and over again like are you sure yes i'm sure i still love you oh i just don't know and it's just over and over again i'm like enough well, and then it's just weird yeah. because there's no conflict like i thought oh this is when donovan's really gonna end up being the villain he's gonna like freak out that his set is being taken out but then they sit down and have a beer and he's like yeah hey it's all good I'm like what <laughs> what's going on yeah. yeah yeah it was interesting too that trace is the show like or n- not chesapeake Sh- shores show but like his the band yeah so band show um everybody else they seem like a backup singer now like lee she's not singing yeah. up there with him she's like a backup girl or whatever so yeah. did mark call get his way and get trace like subtly in the front of i mean evidently he said he's used to doing things by himself yeah. so i don't, I don't know. know it's weird it's weird yeah, but, the conflict there is boring <laughs> yeah it kind of is uh and i don't think it's i i don't know like it's a shame because i think the jesse metcalf section is doing a pretty good job uh so i i think they could give him more conflicts like why not have donovan freak out and that would be kind of interesting yeah yeah right i i think so i mean that's the thing is you met you actually casey you said the word that i guess i was trying to look for is it's kind of boring and i feel bad because he is doing a good job and i do enjoy you know 
watching the band actually perform that's fun but in the end it's like okay well where are they going with this because it just seems kind of stagnant like he's on tour still and abby is still upset with him on tour even when she's joining him on tour she's still upset with parts of the tour and i'm just like I just feel like there's some there's got to be something else that they can throw in the mix that'll make all of it more interesting whether it's a conflict yeah. within the band or the other bands or I don't know I just yeah. I it's kind of like the land trust the, done <laughs> I mean we did have the paparazzi thing the yeah fake people magazine yeah celebs celebs <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so there is that conflict with this fan comes up, wants to take his picture and she's like, you too, Abby. And there's on some, you know, thing, there's some big story about uh, Trace and Abby and the girls. And that scene was so stilted. <laughs> Hi, can I take your picture? <laughs> you too, Abby. You have a beautiful family. <laughs> right. You're like, uh -huh. Okay, I'm worried about the zombie fan. <laughs> I'm gonna come and turn you. Uh, yeah, I know she was very pretty bad actress, but um, yeah. What do you think of that whole conflict? I, I just don't. I again, I don't see why she's surprised. I mean, in the day of social media, and you, I mean, people that are known for nothing that just get recorded on planes for talking to each other and all of a sudden those videos go viral and photos of people doing whatever. Yeah. Like, I don't, I don't understand why it's a surprise. Is it something that I would actively want my children involved in? Obviously not. I wouldn't want them splashed all over gossip websites, but she seemed legitimately surprised. And I'm like, again, you're with a musician who's gradually getting more popular. He goes yeah. on tour. He has women fans. He has to do meet and greets. Which, by the way, that meet and greet cracked me up because there was this little cluster of people and instead of going around to the front of the table, say hi, he goes straight through them and he's all like bobbing and weaving through all these fans. And I'm like, why didn't you just go around? There's only like 20 people there. Well, and if he's really this famous, like he needs a bodyguard. Like, well, this is And you ridiculous. make a line. I've been to a lot of meet and greets. You make a line and everybody waits their turn and they're yeah. already sitting there. In fact, the tour would definitely have security because they don't want their star to get injured so they would right. for sure have like security like part the way and whatever and that would all be organized an organized fan of it <laughs> made me laugh i was like he just yeah. went straight through those people they were all grabbing at him right. yeah. 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 so oh, how boy. popular is trace supposed to be like I we know he's not tim mcgraw popular but he's not like nobody i get the feeling you know? they're trying to make him be like a dirk bentley luke bryant like whatever level which is probably i don't know probably a little ridiculous a lot ridiculous well because okay as somebody who lived in dallas for nine years i'm gonna say that there's not that many large venues that they kept showing the crowds for i was like are they just playing the same venue over and over again or is this different venues because in dallas <laughs> There's not that many large venues to play at. And he kept saying, like, yeah, Dallas. Shout out to the actual Dallas skyline, though. That was cool. Yeah, at but least they did that. And unlike Baltimore, which was just, like, <laughs> two store shot fronts of Vancouver. Like, I was Baltimore. dying. Yeah. I was like, dude, that's really the Dallas skyline. Hey. Yeah. But it, I just kept thinking. Yeah. I was like, and that's a long, like, they played, like, three different shows in Dallas. And I'm like, okay, there's really not that many large scale country music venues in in dallas like that but <laughs> yeah whatever yeah. paparazzi who's like taking pictures of her getting into a taxi cab that's like not gonna sell on tmc <laughs> like that's not a that's not a prime <laughs> like <laughs> yeah no. uh i mean unless you're like britney spears and you're you know showing stuff you shouldn't show getting in the taxi cab <laughs> it's not the spouse of some up-and-coming country star picture is not going to be a big big money shot but um anyway so yeah we do get megan going up to mick and saying here is this incredible archway thing and i want you to build this in exchange for cinnamon roll what do you think of this done yeah <laughs> i would do a lot for cinnamon roll yeah <laughs> I could easily be bribed for your baked goods. Yeah. 
yeah. most for but, sure. Yeah. And uh, that those two the whole time. That time I was like, hmm. Then there was another time I was like, hmm. Yeah. What's going on here with these two? I am highly intrigued. <laughs> I feel like there's definitely potential for sure. Like I feel in it too. I agree. Uh, so, and Megan says that, uh, she says, when a woman tells you to not go to any trouble, she means to go to all the trouble. Do you agree or disagree? Hmm. I think it depends on who you're talking to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Honestly. Because if I'm telling my husband, don't go to any trouble, I know it's my birthday, but whatever. I mean, give me all the gifts. <laughs> <laughs> but if it's like my boss and he's like, well, we'll do something. Like, no, nah, don't worry about it. Don't go to any trouble. I'll just, you know, whatever. Because eh, I don't expect him to read my mind. But my husband, I'm like, yes. Yeah. Pile it on. Here we go. Yeah. I totally agree with yeah. you, Lisa. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I mean I don't know I don't try to try to play like super games but like but yeah I agree especially if somebody's like don't get me anything for Christmas yeah right don't believe that in <laughs> yeah forget it that's a test yeah. all men out there if y'all listen to this that's a test yeah, great. <laughs> uh one time my dad did that and he was like oh you guys you don't have to give me anything for my birthday this year i just want you to like do chores around the house or something i can't even remember he was like wash my car whatever and so we were like fine we're not gonna give you anything because he's super hard to shop for and he was so mad at us <laughs> <laughs> that would be me. for like weeks <laughs> it's like i cannot believe you didn't give me anything for my birthday so oh, it was really lesson me. learned <laughs> right. uh so all right uh yeah so then nell sends or megan whoever has the o'brien men involved in putting up lights and that seems to be the key to resolving o'brien conflict she has <laughs> yeah. she has mick and thomas putting up lights twinkle lights which we shouldn't be surprised because in hallmark twinkle lights equal love so <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes and so connor and kevin are putting up twinkle lights and he is being such a baby he was driving me crazy and i even <laughs> said in twitter i was like I really don't understand Connor and his bad attitude. And I was like, Andrew Francis, what is happening here? <laughs> he was like, I promise. But he wasn't wearing a cardigan. The yeah, but it was, a, it was a sweater with a zipper. Yeah, but it wasn't a cardigan. Was and I was like, cardigan. Hallmark listened to our body. I listened to that episode and was like, <laughs> okay, nix the cardigans. Yeah, it was so happy at the end of the episode he was in a <laughs> suit again like, <laughs> <laughs> that was a cute That's scene a tie on. Yeah. yeah so he was being such a baby driving me crazy and uh yeah so then we get to the best scene that i know we've just been waiting to talk about with jess acting like a complete maniac but it was so funny and great she's throwing this tennis ball or whatever at <laughs> david's window and he's like why are you doing this and she's like well i didn't want to disturb your work like inside so she's like what <laughs> What's going on? I that is it. typical Jess. Yeah. <laughs> and I loved it because there's that moment that David looks at her and you can see it on his face that he just indulges every yeah. weird, quirky thought that she has and he gets it. He's like, uh oh, Jess brain is happening right now. Just go with it and just let it be what it is. And it was so cute and I just really it loved it. Really I cute. just yeah. I reminded me of in How I Met Your Mother, there was a whole episode or several episodes where Barney talks about women with crazy eyes. And he's like, don't, you can't be with people with the crazy eyes. And Jess is like 100% crazy eyes. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I love her. Yeah. And he's all for it. He's hooked. Like these parents have no hope <laughs> of 
getting him back. Like, no chance. So, and it was so cute. I just about died when he says, Jess, ever since I became your chef, I only wanted to be with you. Oh my gosh, that was really adorable. <laughs> yeah. He was hanging off the balcony. His hair was fluttering a little <sighs> bit. I memorized a lot about that scene. Yeah. <laughs> yeah did you think I was pretty romantic Casey I mean I did but I was super scared that like mama bear was gonna come out and be like what you doing to my boy <laughs> I was waiting for it and then it didn't happen I was like man I missed a really good moment I was scared. <laughs> yeah it was so romantic and and then they're like all super flirty about like Romeo and Juliet and <laughs> <laughs> so yeah so i guess he's juliet in this in this uh circumstance because he's the one on the balcony so that's pretty romantic <laughs> that's like how progressive <laughs> of hallmark <laughs> um yeah and so we get more baked good bribes from megan and that was really cute and but another character i would like to see have some conflict like i was really expecting from the interviews there to be more conflict involving Megan's character and there to be like brought up issues about like her leaving and, and I'm hoping that will come But right now. Like the last two, three episodes, she's just basically been like the sage council that's making everybody happy. Yeah. Yeah. So although I, I think they're building on something just because of the whole like Mick and Megan thing. And then, um, Robin and Thomas renewing their vows and then Mick and yeah. Megan having their moments and then um, you know what they said something at the end and Megan was like I don't know hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. about the past or something like that and I was like I think this is setting the stage for something yeah I mean I really hope it is otherwise I will be very disappointed if it's just like plateau yeah, I agree with you. I hope so too. Uh, and I hope we get some, some conflict, some interesting, you know, you're dealing with things from the past and old wounds. And, but like I said, it's just an interesting choices they're making. Uh, but she's the best. Barbara Niven is just so good in the role and you were just, she was so sweet this whole episode. So sweet. Yeah. Um, and I loved all the fashion on this episode. I thought that, mm -hmm. The, the outfits with the floppy hats that Brie and Jess were wearing were so beautiful. And I love floppy hats. And they looked great when they were playing croquet or something like that. <laughs> uh, they looked so good. And uh, yeah, and then you finally have Kevin and Connor. And Connor says, I mean, Kevin says, what are you, 12? And we all agree, right? That that was a correct yeah. thing yes. to say. Yeah. Yes. I would have said it sooner than Kevin. Um, and so here we go. So the, uh, so the mom takes Jess aside and says, look, you can run an auberge or whatever in Maine just fine. And he can be here and you can have a great life and all the stuff like she was actually making a little bit of sense do you agree or not agree mm. no <laughs> what do you think about i don't i just it's not that i don't agree with her it's just of course i think she has an agenda and it's like trying to get through what that agenda is i mean i don't know it just everything just feels like so calculated and so just which obviously it is but I don't know. I'm like, Jess, you went all that, spent all that time setting up the B&B &B, and now you're just going to be here in this giant house. I guess. I guess that's what you do when you're young. You're just like, yeah, we'll take chances. So that's cool. But, but I mean, I feel like with any relationship, like you're combining two lives into one combined life. And so like you are going to have things to discuss like where are we going to live are we going to live closer to your parents or my parents are we going to what are you know right. what's our career goals as a couple am i going to you know and they're not even engaged but i'm just saying like you have to have those conversations about like 
am I going to go to work? Are we going to have child? Like all that stuff. I feel like you need to at least sort of like be relatively on the same page. Um, and certainly like where you're going to live, like, and I mean, I don't know. I, I feel like most people, they end up picking like near one side of the family or another, as far as the place they're going to live. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's valid of, of the mom to be like, well, I, you know, like, yeah, you want to live by your parents, but like, I want to have my, my kids by me as well. Yeah. But they're grown people. Like his mom needs to butt out of their, their, you know, business. That's a discussion that David and Jess need to have. And yeah. the mom shouldn't have any influence over that. And I think, you know, you know, parent for the most part, parents can be well-intended and, you know, they do want it because, you know, they want their son or daughter or their grandchildren to be close by. But I think it's the Pex case. It's all motive. Yeah. There is nothing. It's all motive. It's all agenda. Um, they don't really care about Jack. Well, I mean, they kind of do because they looked into her life, but they don't really care about that. They want somebody to take over their business. That's not their daughter. So, I mean, like I said before, had they been very kind and loving and open and warm people, then I can see like, okay, yeah, she's, you know, David grew up as a mama's boy or something like that, you know, but yeah. um, she's just calculating. I, I think she's got an agenda and yeah. those things, where we're going to live, what are we going to do? Are you going to work? Are you not going to work? Are you going to have a BNB? Are you going to be CEO? Or are we going to travel? That's discussions that David and Jess need to have and we've never seen that between them. Yeah. So it's been like the mom feeding Jess and like dangling a carrot in front of her face saying, look at all this wealth you can have. <laughs> yeah. And it was kind of interesting because you have a have uh, the M Megan kind of Megan getting Mick to do stuff and having saying this, you know, whole thing about what women want and whatever thing like that. And and then you've got the mom trying to kind of get uh, to like get Jess to do what she wants with these dresses and all this stuff. <laughs> it's like, I don't know. It's kind of funny. It was interesting. In it, it almost felt threatening to me the way she was like, what happens when princesses meet their prince? I don't know. The whole thing just felt a little, a little <laughs> menacing. <laughs> it, was it was very like, um, this is a nice house you have. I mean, you wouldn't want anything bad to happen to it. Would you? It's like, yeah. God, okay well I guess I'll take these dresses and live here god you're like threatening me almost and it made me think of honestly they're treating Jess like she's some, like she's some like random I mean like she's she comes from wealth I mean we, we can't deny that where she lives is a wealthy family you know she comes from a wealthy yeah. family it made me think of that part in Legally Blonde which is like just because I'm not some stupid Vanderbilt doesn't mean I'm white trash Warner I live in Bel Air. Comes from Aaron Spelling. Yeah. <laughs> like, exactly. poor Jess. She lives in Bel Air. Comes from Aaron Spelling, and it's still not good enough for the pegs. Yeah. I mean, if if <laughs> it's a good thing that David didn't fall in love with Rachel from Crazy Rich Agents, because then this would be like a very bad situation. Like that mom was a saint. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I don't know. It's it was. I, you're right that it was the wrong person to be having that conversation with like and she was definitely trying to manipulate jess because jess is the one that she thinks is stupid <laughs> she knows that her son I is a lost cause and so uh she thinks that she can manipulate jess success successfully i think and i feel like i'm about the same age as jess and connor i i don't know um but if somebody were to talk to me and be like, talk to me about princesses, I'd be like, yeah. excuse me? <laughs> well, yeah. we determined last week that Jess like is... It. We determined last week that Jess is 26. <laughs> okay, I'm a little older than Jess. Okay. But still, at 26, I'd be like, mm -mm, yeah. you are not talking yeah. to me like that. I'm not five. <laughs> I do not believe in unicorns and pink castles. Yeah like that's ridiculous yeah but Jess is kind of a crazy person in a lot of ways so like I feel like she embodies the 20 year old girl very well she's this weird mix of confidence and uncertainty all rolled into one where you see yeah. moments where she's like super sure of herself and moments where she's like oh my god I need Abby and yeah. she like breaks down in these weird you know emotional things but I, I I look back on my 20s and I was like, man, I was all over the place. And I feel yeah. like she encompasses that really well. 
Yeah. 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 I think so. And she's really consistent with her character. I think that helps too. Yeah. Yeah. You know, she's always the same basically kind of character. Uh, Yeah. And so then we get the next scene is with Abby and Trace. And I said on Twitter that he went to the Jack Thornton school of courting with a million (laughs) candles. (laughs) <laughs> what is with these two and the lights the twinkle lights and the candles do you, do you do you watch when calls the heart lisa i do okay. yes well i stopped around season three but eh. oh, good choice but yeah. no they have like jack thornton had like cleared out the bed bath and beyond like no <laughs> and uh this is similar and i don't know i would be very nervous if especially if they're she's he's going to blindfold her if i was this museum owner i'd be very nervous thank you i was like they're in a museum and they let them put all these candles around (laughs) what's happening they let them bring cheese and wine and just picnic and what Uh, yeah. yeah that whole scene was weird and after after this many times of twinkle lights and candles, it shouldn't be a surprise anymore. No need to blindfold. You know when you're walking in that room, something's going to be lit up, whether it's twinkle lights, candles. What are we doing next? I mean. Did we know that Abby's favorite things are trace, <laughs> impressionist art, and cheese? No, but I want that on a shirt now. <laughs> My favorite thing, trace, impressionist art, cheese. Done. <laughs> Um, so I think season one, they mentioned she loved art. Okay. I forgot. That. I don't know that it was impressionist art, but I think she did love art because wasn't there a scene where Trace had a conflict with Nick and was like, you weren't there for Abby. I was there for Abby. Did you know that no. she loved, that she did the mural? And then That's Mick was right. like, what mural? And then he drives there and he's like, oh, wow, my daughter's really talented about that she was in the art (laughs) yeah that's true and and yeah i mean and it was really swoon worthy and it was really sweet uh that he would you know remember what she said about about flowers and and to plan that whole romantic night for him i just as much as i i'm a trace defender uh i just feel like we need a little bit more he's just a little bit too much too perfect like i mean i love reading romance novels and stuff like that but like even they have a little more conflict (laughs) this is kidding this is kidding uh yeah so okay wait can i say something just real quick please please i'm sorry i think i realized through this episode why i have such an issue with Mm travi i'm gonna keep saying it um (laughs) I, my favorite couple so far is David and Jess. And I think because their romance to me seems um, natural, like the romantic scenes I feel like they have are just out of nowhere, like in the bookstore when they decide to have a relationship and then she's reading that book and they're going to go through all the phases of the relationship in like five days or whatever it was. And he leans over and they just have these little cute moments and like, yeah. you know, they're in the field and like have these little moments of like coming together and when they kiss and, you know, it's all just very cute. The the table with the cake and the 16 candles, it was all very cute, but it never really seemed like forced or contrived. Whereas with Trace and Abby, it's always got to be these huge productions of surprises of fire lights and twinkle lights and candles and cheese. And everything is just so huge. And oh my God, these giant romance. And it, it never just seems to come natural. Oh, except like that first scene when they first meet up and they go into the river like first season mm-hmm. and they meet up in the oh, river and they swim yeah yes that was like so yeah Jeez, you know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that was hallmark skinny dipping yeah right. <laughs> but it yeah. was just like and then they came up and they were like the, i mean that was so just like spontaneous and it was like ooh, this could be something and then it turned into all these and i know they have to set up time because they're both busy individuals and just it never seems but yeah, I mean, la- last episode, I think they maybe were trying to do more of those smaller moments with all these things with the girls. But again, he was like perfect. He did everything yeah. perfect. He made every correct choice. He was literally like playing with the girls so she could rest. He's like makes the perfect choice about the swimming. He, I mean, he, he so that, that becomes it's fine for one episode. It's fine for two episodes, but now we're going on four episodes. 
I need to see some conflict <laughs> uh, mm. where, because nobody is perfect, even if you're beautiful. <laughs> right? <laughs> I agree. I mean, go on. <laughs> I mean, even Elizabeth Thornton makes more mistakes. Than, than this moment I really liked with Jess and Bree on the bed, hanging out and just talking. And that was really nice because I think that that is such a thing about being a sister is you just have those like little moments of I'm just uh, talking late at night, at least for me and my sisters. And my sisters are all really far away. Uh, two of them are in England and one is in um, Virginia and I'm in Utah. Wow. So yeah. uh, I was kind of like, awesome. oh, I miss, I miss that. That was, I thought it was sweet. That was a sweet moment. So surprised because I thought that, yeah, I thought that this vow renewal was going to be like at the end of the season. It was all going to be leading up to it and I was really surprised that it all happened this episode. Were you? Yeah. I mean, it just seemed really, I wasn't expecting it. Sorry. Go ahead. Oh, sorry. I was going to say, I mean, I saw the preview from last week. So I was like, oh, well, there it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I guess I missed that part of the preview. But anyway, uh, yeah. And so uh, then you have a cute scene with Jess and David dancing. And they were so cute. And I thought another lovely scene between Mick and Thomas, and they were talking and, uh, and they're talking about marriage and the vow renewal and everything like that. And there's sort of a moment where, uh, you know, Thomas says like, wow, you managed to raise five great kids despite being a screw up. And, <laughs> and there was a, like, Trey Williams did a very good job in that scene he like put his hand up to his like he's like holding back the tears and i was like i'm not crying you're crying <laughs> i was like it's super dusty in here now <laughs> it was good it was really good i thought he was yeah. really good in that scene yeah he was um and then yeah this is where Bree finds the book or whatever and they freak out and, <laughs> and we get the scene uh so evidently connor melted all of kevin's army soldiers which maybe <laughs> that was why he felt drawn to become a medic in the army <laughs> it's like dramatic <laughs> from a young age i don't know but <laughs> but i i can't say that he didn't deserve it because he's he he, he taught the wrong alphabet to Connor. <laughs> Girl. Right. Payback. You remember from last week. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, I was really glad because we needed to be back on Team Connor again. So mm -hmm. Connor says he's sorry. What did you think, Casey, of that? Uh, it was finally. I was like, oh, <laughs> thank goodness. We're done. Yeah. Connor's not going to be a jerk anymore. Well, at least not about that. <laughs> yeah. But um, I, I thought it was kind of cute and quirky how he gave him the little toy soldier medic. Yeah. I was like, and he was like, oh, look, it even looks like you. <laughs> and that's me on the stretcher. <laughs> yeah, that was cute. That was really, really cute. And I think what's frustrating about, what was frustrating about the conflict with Connor is that it was just felt so immature because like everything had been resolved. Like if there had been conflict about the whole Lantris thing, like that would have been immature, I guess, but more understandable. Whereas this thing with Kevin and Danielle and everything was just so petty. And uh, so uh, I was glad to see them have this moment and, and forgive each yeah. other and whatever. Yeah, Connor's got some issues. He's got some complexes about Kevin being the older brother. It's kind of like, dude, yeah. <laughs> let it go. We yeah. are grown. We are very grown. As an older child of six kids, not the oldest, but as an older child, uh, actually, I'm the same spot as uh, as Kevin in my family. And I can say that the, the younger kids have it way easier than the older kids. So Connor. Yeah, they do. Yeah. It's just me and my brother, and I'm the oldest. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Connor. I'm the youngest, and I'll tell you, yeah, I got away with a lot. That's right. <laughs> uh, yeah. I mean, I just say, well, we got their health and you got their money. So it all worked out, I think, in the 
can't. But uh, but yeah, no, I mean, they got things that we didn't even dream of getting. And so, yeah. Um, and then this whole, like, back half of the, of the episode with Jess was so great. I loved it. And I love Lacey. She was so great in this with her with that dress on. And there's like that really cool, this was a cool house with this like cool, like doorway, this arched doorway. And she's like sitting there and it reminded me of like, I don't know, of like a death becomes her or something like, like, <laughs> death becomes her or something like, like it was just so like, she thinks she can mess around with me. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it was great. I thought this whole part was just so good. It was awesome. And uh, yeah, I don't know. I loved it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, I don't know. And she looked so beautiful in that dress too. That was my favorite part is at the end, she's like, and I'm keeping this dress. And I was like, <laughs> I actually smacked the table. I was like, that's right, girl, you do that yeah it was awesome yeah Yeah. and you see the sister in the background going like like giving this kind of this expression and (laughs) and she Jess is like I don't know she's like well my family they are a mess and they're crazy but I love them and I don't want to be around all of you and she just let them have it like I don't know. It, it, what'd, you, what'd you think of that, Casey? I thought it was perfect yeah. how Lacey played Jess in that moment. Yeah. It was totally Jess, very on point. Um, the whole Jessica, that made me laugh so hard because um, <laughs> it was ridiculous. And um, But also the emotions that Lacey played as Jess, just, you know, being really angry one moment and then like we be sad that she's basically gonna lose David in her mind like she was like and I just love your son but I'm so angry with you it was <laughs> great yeah. acting I thought um and storming out with the dress oh. the gorgeous dress was Operation amazing. Pumpkin was great I was all about it it was so fun it's such a sister thing too to take a moment when Brie runs out and she's like, You're in your dress too. And she's like, Yes. And they're running and she's like, You look great. And she's like, Thank you. And I'm like, as they're trying to escape, run away. They're like, You look great. You know, and then when earlier when Jess was like super mad and ranting about everything and Brie's like, Okay, I'm sorry, but you look really good in that dress. I was like, This is such a sister thing to do, no matter how mad you are to take a moment and be like, Okay, but you look really good. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I loved it. Yeah. It was awesome. Well, and it was it rang just really authentic, even though it was like in insane it was like authentic insane it was so good and i loved it i thought it was one of the best things that they've ever had on the show like it was so good yeah and and when he's sitting there <laughs> he's standing there with the shoe i was like because i tweeted out like she's not gonna leave her shoe she's not gonna leave a shoe there's no way they're gonna do that like, that would be over the top but then they did and i was like yes just standing there holding that shoe it was perfect i'm a sucker for the i just love the moments when they show the guy thinking he's he's lost the girl and how it affects him and when he comes sprinting out of the house trying to catch her and i was just like yep there it is i'm a sucker for all of this every single moment and then he reaches down i was like shut up he's got the shoe oh my god yeah I fell hook, line, and sinker for all of it. It was so good. I felt like the writers were like, you didn't give us a princess movie, so we're putting it in here. We don't (laughs) care what you say. (laughs) (laughs) And then we had the um, vow renewal there. And uh, yeah, and so Nell says that you have to live marriage with one eye shut as two married people what do you think about that advice i was kind of confused what was the line again when they said it because i kind of was still processing i think what she meant 
is that like when you're single you have two your own two eyes but then when you're married you have one eye shut so each person contributes one eye to the marriage so then that's two eyes that makes sense (laughs) right i don't know i'm the single one here so I, i i might not have gotten the analogy but i think that's what it meant that now all of a sudden you have two eyes even though you have four eyes because two of them are shut i I was con- I was confused by the metaphor to be quite honest. <laughs> I, I, I thought it was like some Irish thing that I wasn't familiar with, and I was like, because I'm Hispanic, and I'm like, we don't. When you talk about eyes, it's because you're cursed in someone. So I was like, oh, what is, what is happening here? I was like, well, I didn't get it. So I just kind of glazed over it. But I thought, I mean, as a married person, I think I'm too far. Like in the first few years, it's all exciting. You're like, yeah, and then after a while, you're like, dude. Stop leaving wet towels on the bed. <laughs> that's all I care about are wet towels on the bed. And that's just, you know, after yeah. a while, it just kind of, you know. <laughs> I remember one time my, my parents never argued in front of us. I mean, <laughs> ever. Like, they were so good about that. I, but one time I remember <laughs> having a fight about my dad using the dish towels as a, um, as a rag. She's like, no, these are for wiping your hands off on the, like, you know, dish towels. They're not for cleaning up stuff. And you know, she was very frustrated. <laughs> I think that's my parents. That argument. That's that's my parents' version of throwing the, the, wet <laughs> on the bed, I think. <laughs> well, now I don't feel so bad that I didn't understand the 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 metaphor. And because then, then later Mick is like, Do you remember that from our wedding? And um Megan was like I don't really remember anything and I was just like mm. I think she remembers oh died. you think she does I huh? oh I, oh. I, I really do think she remembers she just doesn't want to open that can of worms again because she doesn't know how she feels about Mick <laughs> yeah but they were, really, they were a little flirty I think this whole episode they were kind of flirty I think like Where just a little bit. just a little bit they were she was Kind of, they were both coming up to that line with the whole like, here's a cinnamon roll, yeah. my thing, yeah, <laughs> my <right>. arch. <laughs> here's Agreed. another baked good from Sally. But he does at least say to her, uh, "You were right. If we're gonna do it, we should have done it right." And uh, and I think that 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 is true. And it's gonna be interesting to see what happens. Mm-hmm. So there you go. That's the end of the. That was the end. We got another song from Trace, and that was the end of the episode. So, yeah, I just thought everything with Jess was just, like, amazing. It was so good. Yeah. So, (laughs) uh, yeah. Yeah, it's going to be interesting to see what happens next week, because I guess the only real conflict we have is the whole thing with the paparazzi, and... Uh, and what's going to happen with David if he's, you know, I guess, is he going to come after her or what's he going to do? Yeah. And I don't know if we're going to see Simon again ever. Do you think we're going to see Simon again? I hope so. I like him. Yeah. Especially with his haircut. <laughs> <laughs> I think we'll see him again, but maybe not next week. Yeah. Uh, do you agree that Simon looks like a taller British version of Andrew <laughs> Connor? <laughs> we, yes. We said that last week. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Yeah. He looks like a taller British version of Connor and Macaulay Culkin. <laughs> yeah. From back in the day. <laughs> true. We're coming and talking about this episode. It was a lot of fun. And let us know in the comments section or on Twitter what you thought, whether you liked the Just Stuff as much as we did. <laughs> And uh, what you think of what they're doing with some of the characters and the writing this season. We'd love to talk about it. And uh, Lisa, where can people find you? I am on Twitter and Instagram as Girls on Hallmark. Great. And Casey, what about you? You can find me on Twitter at Hallmark My Words. 
great. And you can find me at Rachel's Reviews on iTunes and on YouTube. And uh, you can follow the podcast, the Hallmarkies Pod, Instagram, Twitter. And uh, if you can put in your reviews, we got a new review this week, which was very, or today, which was very exciting on iTunes. Uh, we really appreciate it because it helps more people to find uh, the podcast. So put in your reviews uh, and that would be great. Let us know what you think. And thanks so much, ladies. This was really fun. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.